Hey guys, it's Tang here, and today we're going to be going over the animals shown in EW's recent live stream and talking about the release date and some more info on the tigers as well as the snow leopards. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Now before we get into the recent EW live stream, we're actually going to take a look at the Sundar Patan date reveal trailer. So without further ado, we're going to get right into it. Welcome to Sundalpatan, Nepal, a one-of-a-kind hunting reserve that is both beautiful and challenging. Here, you'll find animals you can't see anywhere else and experience the thrill of the hunt like never before. There are three regions in Sundarpatan, each with their own distinct climate, wildlife and rich cultures. In the middle is Pahad, with its temperate climate, characterized by the terraced rice fields and dense, colorful forests where our national flower, the rhododendron, blooms in the wild. It is here you'll spot the Tibetan fox, a clever hunter with a face you can't forget. To the south is the Terai region. This lush landscape owes itself to the heavy rains that frequent it in the dense forests and savannas, it's easy to move unseen. But the same goes for the reserve's top predator, the Bengal tiger. It hunts its prey by stalking from behind, and that could be you. Finally, to the north is the Himal region. These might not be the tallest mountains in Nepal, but don't be fooled. The Himal is a hard place to survive. It's this hostile landscape that the snow leopard calls home. Skilled at stalking and hiding, you'll need more than just tracking skills to spot one. Sundarpatan is not for the faint of heart, but if you're up for adventure and up to the challenge, there's nowhere else like it. Welcome to Nepal. Welcome to Sundarpatan. So yeah, that was the trailer for Sundar Patan that released today, and it looks really nice. I'm very excited. The animals all look really good, and we'll get into that. But the first thing we're obviously going to talk about is the release date. This map is going to be coming out June 18th this year. So we only got two more weeks until we're able to hop on this map and check out everything that this map has to offer. So now we travel over to the new stream that just came out from EW. And the first thing I want to talk about is Jaxi did show off the new rifle that is going to be coming with this map. This rifle is chambered in 577 450 rounds and is going to be used for class 4 through 8. I do think it should be a class 4 through 9. I don't know why they just chose it to be a 4 through 8, but it is what it is. So this is Jaxi showing off the weapon and just listen to how nice it sounds. It just sounds beautiful. So now that you have heard the weapon, it's time we travel over to the animals. Since this video is coming out later than other Call of the Wild content creators videos, I'm not going to be going too deep into them. I'm just going to be very brief and talking about the new species. So Jaxi started off by showing off the three returning species, which two of them we know were the black buck and the water buffalo. The third species is actually the gray lag goose. I genuinely thought it was going to be the bar headed goose. But it's confirmed that it is the Grey Lag Goose, so it is what it is. So then Jaxi decided to show off the new redesigns for the Water Buffalo and the Black Buck. And I gotta say, they both look really good. I love the detail in the Water Buffalo, especially in the ears. That's really nice. And the Black Buck just look amazing. They look a lot better than they used to before. And I really hope a lot more animals get this treatment. So then Jaxi goes on to the 10 new species that are coming to the game. And the first animal he shows is the one, the only, the mighty, Wooly Hare. Yep, the 10th species that we didn't know before is confirmed to be the Wooly Hare. So we have a new hare species and it looks really nice design-wise. But it's going to be hard to get one of these. I mean, it's already P2 
pain and torture for me to get a diamond mountain hare over on Revon Tule Coast. The next animal Jaxi showed off was the Northern Red Muntjac, and they really look amazing. He did not spawn any of the diamond racks for any of the horned or antlered species. He wants the community to figure that out ourselves, but these still look really nice. The next animal is, of course, the Tibetan fox, and the model looks really nice. And I know people are saying it looks like something out of a cartoon movie, but that is actually what they do look like in the real world. So you will have to look up a picture of a Tibetan fox. And, I, and you'll understand what I mean by that is what they look like. The next animal Jaxie Beard shows off is the Wild Yak. And they look really nice. These things are tanks from what he said. I wouldn't be surprised considering that these are a cattle species and they are really big. And as you can see here, Jaxie also showed off an albino yak, which is really cool. And he didn't want to show off the other fur types. He wants the community to figure that out themselves. So we're going to have to grind these animals and find the fur types ourselves. Which, that'll be very exciting. The next animal Jaxie Beard spawned was the blue sheep, aka the Baral, and it looks really nice. Once again, just really excellent work by Expansive Worlds. They've done a really nice job with this species. Next up is the Barasinga, and they look really nice. So we have both a smaller one and a bigger one for the racks. I'm not sure if this big one is a diamond rack. It kind of looks like that, so if that is a diamond rack, that's really nice. If not, I wonder what they're going to look like. But 9 out of 10, this more than likely is a big rack for the Barasinga. The next species Jaxi showed off is one that I'm pretty hyped for, the Nilgai, which is the largest antelope species in Asia, and they look really good. I love the way they look. More than likely, I'm going to be putting in a bit of time for these guys because they look really good. I might get a couple diamonds of these guys. And next up, it is the Himalayan Tar. And these guys look really, really good. I love the fur quality in these guys. They are just so fluffy. It's really nice to see that the engine is able to handle it. Because back then, they have said that the engine isn't really good with animals with very long and fluffy hair. But it's nice to see that they finally took that step and did that with the Himalayan Tar. Hopefully we get to see that with the lions on Verhanga. Another thing too, it is pretty much confirmed at this point that the Tar is the new great one. So Jaxi Deer did show off the tigers before the snow leopards, but I wanted to talk about the snow leopard first. These guys look really, really good. And this is something that I like that Jaxi Beard said, actually. He said that there are actually less snow leopards than tigers on the map. So in the dev diary, it did say that there were only going to be 16 tigers on the map. And there's going to be less snow leopards than tigers up in the mountain region. That's really good. Honestly, it makes these guys elusive and probably one of the hardest diamonds to get. Matter of fact, these might be the hardest diamond to get in the game. These guys might be even harder to get a diamond of than the stubble quail on Emerald Coast. And that says a lot. Because the stubble quail is the smallest animal in the game. But this is really nice because it provides the thrill of the hunt. And makes the snow leopard very elusive. Honestly, this is what the Eurasian lynx should have been like. So now we get on to the main selling point of the map. The Bengal tiger. And they look really good. Jaxi Beard had showed off all nine fur types. Seven if we're not counting the pseudo-melanistic variants. And they all look really, really good. I can't really pick a favorite, to be honest. And then later on, Jaxi did show him off being aggressive. And holy, that is stuff out of nightmares. This basically just screams, you better sleep with one eye open. Because it's terrifying, especially the melanistic. And at the end of the stream, Jaxi Beard turned him all aggressive. And he had one come at him. And he did hit it with a new rifle. And then, pow! Bro got slapped in the next week by the tiger. I gotta say, that animation of the tiger just jumping at the character is terrifying. Basically just performed a WWE move on Jaxie here. Hey, look at Randy Orton slithering. Oh, watch, like out, watch, out, watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out! Honestly, Expansive Worlds have done a really good job with the tigers. The animations, just everything about them is really good. Especially that attack animation. I mean, we gotta take a look at that again. That tiger literally jumps at you like a Five Nights at Freddy's 2 jump scare. 
Hope you guys enjoyed that little trick. I'm not sorry. But yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about for this video. I am very excited for this map. Like I said, it's coming out on the 18th of this month. So we don't have to wait too long. In the meantime, I might either try to get a Diamond Mountain here or another great one or both before the new map comes out. And I am very glad that we aren't going to be waiting long for this map to come out because like I've said before, I've been pretty burnt out. Not just on Call of the Wild. Well, not necessarily Call of the Wild, but I've just been burnt out on gaming. But anyways, thank you guys for watching the video. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below and let me know what you think about Sundar Bataan. Are you excited for it? Let me know down below. Feel free to check out the Discord server. Thank you guys for watching the video and I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Survive.